Today, we're going to talk about a very um, interesting subject. And um, I want you to open with me to Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. <clears throat> and it goes like this have i not commanded you be strong and courageous do not be frightened do not be dismayed for the lord your god is with you wherever you go today i want to talk about fear and um, i named my subject fear not so if you're taking notes which you should be write a title fear not you know in a bible it's there is about 110 times that is mentioned there is a specific scripture that's a that says fear not or do not be afraid or do not be frightened or uh, uh something similar within that context 110 times some people you probably maybe have seen some memes or some some things going around online that says there's 365 times that it says do not be afraid you know one for every day but it's actually not accurate it's about 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 110 times in the king james version but even if it's 110 times one time is enough for god to tell us to not be afraid and for us to hold on to this promise and so today i want to talk a little bit about about a little bit about fear we just read the scripture where god commands joshua and he tells him do not be afraid and you do not be dismayed and when so here's the background story israelites leave egypt god shows himself mighty he delivers them he drowns the pharaoh and they are walking onto the uh, on the way to the promised land and as they're walking to the on the way to the promised land israelites they choose out 12 spies one spy representing each tribe so that then so that they can go out and spy out the land and bring some goods from the land to show what God has promised them so the 12 people they go up into that land to spy us uh, to spy out they bring some some fruits they bring some things from that land and they bring it back to the camp of the Israelites and they report on it and they said yes whatever God has promised us is good whatever he promised us there's it's a land of milk and honey it's it's a great land it's an awesome land but but the ten of them say but there are giants and we look like grasshoppers in their eyes and there are fortified fortified cities and their walls are big and strong and there is no way we can conquer them we will be destroyed by them two of them Joshua and Caleb say guys yes the cities are fortified yes in that land there's a lot of giants but God said that this is our land God said that it belongs to us God has given it to us let's go and fight and take the possession and of course the crowd the the nation of Israel they sided with the ten spies they brought ne that brought negative report and uh, they almost want to kill Moses and Joshua and Caleb. God intervened and God got mad at them and angry and he said because you refuse to trust me but you allowed fear into your life. You will not enter the promised land. You will wander around wilderness for 40, for 40 years and only your kids will enter the promised land. So now we fast forward into the scripture we just read. Moses was their great leader. He was the one that heard from God. He's the one that introduced Ten Commandments. And now Moses is gone. All generation died. This new generation have never seen anything um, spectacular. And they have a new leader. They, they're not sure should they trust him or not. So here's Joshua. He's not sure what to do. He is not sure where to go and, and how to lead this nation. And first thing God begins to deal with Joshua is about a very issue that stopped them from coming into the promised land. Point number one, fear will stop you from reaching your promised land. Fear will stop you from reaching your dream, your goal and your destiny. Before God could take Joshua into the promised land, God had to make sure that there was no fear in Joshua's life. 
God had to make sure to make Joshua understand that what stopped you from entering into your promised land in the first place. Make sure that you don't allow the same fear to stop you from entering the promised land again. Before God is going to take you to the place where He has intended for you, what He called you. He's going to begin to deal with your trust in Him. Because initially what fear is, is not trusting God. Not trusting His promise. Fear kept a servant that was given one talent from, a, from receiving reward. Jesus in Matthew chapter, 20, uh, Matthew chapter 25 says a parable that there was, uh, that there was a master who left uh, the country and before leaving the country he gave his three servants. To one he gave five talents, to the other one he gave two and the third one he gave one talent. One talent is about 73 pounds of gold. Okay, so about if we convert it to today's what it's worth today, one talent was worth about 1.25 million dollars. So you see the one got 1.25 million dollars. You know one talent sounds little but when you compare it it's actually a lot. I'm sure none of you would mind to get 1.25 million dollars to do something with it, right? Uh, so when we talk about one talent we might feel bad for this guy but don't feel bad for him because he got enough, okay? second guy got about three three something million and the third guy uh, got uh, over six million dollars close to seven million so not, not too bad it's a nice master he gave him good portion and so first one goes that had they got six million dollars uh, he multiplied it and made it twice as much second one did the same thing third one comes to the master and he says master I knew you were a wicked person you so where you reap where you don't sow you demand things that you shouldn't demand you know what I saved what you gave me I kept what you gave me and here's what you gave me I did nothing with it he said because I was afraid fear stopped him from moving forward in life from investing, from starting a business, from moving in, uh, into the next relationship, moving into uh, starting a family. Fear kept him where he was and the response of the master would be, you know what, great, at least maybe you didn't lose it. I'll take mine back. No, the master said, you're wicked and lazy servant. You should have at least given to the investor so that he can multiply the money so I can get mine back in return and we see that he did not get a reward not only he did not get a reward he got punished anytime you allow fear to settle in your life you will not receive a reward but you will receive punishment because fear is punishment with it itself it torments it kept Jews from the promised land it stopped the servant from receiving a reward and if you allow fear to creep in into your life, if you allow uh, fear to live within your life, it will stop you from receiving what God has for you. Fear stops you from doing what you're supposed to do and makes you do the things that you don't want to do. Fear is paralyzing. Fear stops you at make, it stops you from making decisions or to make or for making right kind of decisions. Um, in the in a uh, scientist in um, Fe, Feyuna Community Research Institute in North Carolina I think that's how you say that uh, they discovered you're more you're likely to freeze on the spot rather than run when the tiger charges at you when the tiger charges you, you you're most likely to freeze on the spot then to run. When a tiger roars, it lets out a sound waves that are audible, the ones that sound terrifying, and it also lets out sound at a frequency that's so low that you can't hear it, but you can feel it. And so, as the tiger emerges from the underground and flashing of its colors and the sound of roar and impact of the unheard sound waves felt by you, all of it combined provides, uh, provided an all assault out on your senses. The effect is that you're momentarily paralyzed so that um, instead of reacting and running or ditching you're frozen in your tracks until the tiger attacks. Fear. Bible says that devil, that Satan walks around like a roaring lion seeking who he, who he may devour. 
there's a reason why God said he walks around roaring lion because and Satan's greatest greatest um, tactic greatest weapon is fear if he can deposit fear into your heart if he can if he can make you be afraid to take the next step to take the next opportunity to step out and do something different he can stop you from succeeding in life and he can rob you of your future that God has for you in store fear stops you at your tracks now let's look at let's look at fear uh, there's two different kinds of fears there's a fear that is vital fear is vital response to a physical or emotional danger so there's fear that it's good fear like for example you know trying to walk off a second story, a story building you know there's a natural feel of, of heights which is a good fear because it's uh you're endangering your body or there is there is fear there's fear that um helps us to protect ourselves and react properly when we feel either physically or emotionally endangered but there's another fear fear there is an expectation expectation for negative results negative faith that's what fear is an image of negative outcome this is where you carry an, a negative image of negative outcome expecting negative results expecting the reason why you don't try this out because you failed before and you're afraid you're gonna fail again the reason why you're afraid to go into the relationship next relationship is because you got hurt or you got cheated upon or or uh, or you've been in an abusive relationship so now even when the things look right you're afraid to go into it and it's keeping you from enjoying what God has in store for you or maybe it's past failed relationships or maybe it's uh, failed ideas failed businesses you try to go and get educated in a certain area and you failed on it because maybe you couldn't understand the subject or maybe you couldn't come up with the money uh, and, and you stopped and you don't try again because you have fear everyone experiences fear you know sometimes you think like well there's more people that uh, there's people that are more afraid and, and there's people those that are heroes those that are brave those that are willing to dive on the front of the bullet to save somebody those that are willing to do some crazy things that they don't have fear it's not that they don't have fear it's how they process the fear that's what makes the difference every person experiences fear even our Lord Jesus Christ do you think he was not afraid to go on the cross? Do you think he was not afraid to get beaten and, 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 and suffer all this brutal death that no man can survive? Yes, he didn't. I am sure that he experienced that, those emotions because the Bible says that he was tempted in all things. That's why he can sympathize with us. So from that scripture, I can guarantee you that Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane experienced the emotion of fear for what is about to happen. The fear of unknown. But Jesus Christ he submitted himself to God's will and he overcame fear that's why he came out victorious that's why on the third day he was resurrected fear is weak man's excuse a strong man's motivation you choose who do you want to be some people use fear anxiety uncertainty horror whatever terrible thing happens in their life they can use that as an excuse to excel to overcome to become better to prove it to themselves to prove it to other people to exceed other people use it as an excuse to do nothing there was a story uh, psychologists did a study on this one particular family it was in 1970s uh, the two 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 brothers were in a family and uh, one was very successful the other was not uh, was not successful he was constantly in trouble with the law and drinking and just having all kinds of problems the other one was very very successful very successful businessman and had doctor's degree and so they came to the successful brother and they asked him um, what made you successful and he told him my father he's like what do you mean he's like my father was abusive he was drunk he was nobody he was um he was never took care of the family and I said and I decided to myself I will not be like my father I will be different and I made and I make sure to not be like him I make sure to do better for my life they're like okay 
they went and talked to his other uh, to his brother and uh, the, that's poor that has nothing to his name constantly in trouble with the law they asked him why are you the way you are and they, they and he told me because of my father he said what do you mean that my father was abusive my, my father was drunk my father was this and that and therefore I knew nothing better that's who I became one man experienced exactly the same thing decided to make something different of his life decided to change the other man experienced exactly same but decided to use fear as an excuse to do nothing when you feel facing challenging situation when you're facing unknown when fear creeps in how are you going to survive? How are you going to pay the bills? How are you going to do this? How are you going to do that? How are you going to raise the family? You're a single, uh, you're a single mom. You know, just get into any relationship. Doesn't matter. You know, fear can drive you to do things that you don't want to do and stop you from doing the things that you're supposed to do. Instead of, you just got out of a bad relationship and instead of taking time to recoup, instead of taking time to refocus, instead of taking time to see God, to seek his direction because of fear of being alone you jump into the next one and the next one and the next one and life is a mess life is a bro and shadows and broken pieces or maybe you've you've had you tried starting a business and it failed maybe try starting a second business and and, and you failed and many people say well you know business is risky and it's and it's not for me i can't do it maybe somebody else can do it it's just not me it's not given to me and they use it as an excuse not to move forward and not to start another one and not to succeed and to learn from the past mistakes and when even opportunity presents a good opportunity they pass on it because they're afraid there are other people they try once twice three times four times five times and they don't allow the failure and fear of failure to, uh, to identify them and they try until they succeed and God honors that God honors faith and God can't stand fear because fear is practically a mistrust. It's not trust in God. Saul was afraid. He was afraid of opinions of people. As little as opinions of people. And he lost his kingdom. David went through many situations that where he was afraid. He was chased by Saul. For, I mean for 13 years of his life, 14 years of his life, David was running from Saul and always in danger in his life. David processed fear differently. In Psalm, in Psalm 56, 3, says this. When I am afraid, I put my trust in God. When I'm afraid, David gives us a secret how to deal with fear. When I'm afraid, I put my trust in God. I put my trust in His promise. I put my trust in His faithfulness. I put my trust in His character. When I'm afraid, I trust God. That's why David was called a man after God's own heart. And that's why his kingdom was established forever. And Jesus is coming to sit on David's throne. That's the two difference between two men. One man was afraid of people's opinions. That's why he couldn't wait for Saul. Uh, uh, he couldn't Samuel he couldn't wait for Samuel he could he was afraid he said I was afraid of what people would say and he sacrificed on his own and instead of waiting for instructions from God and one lost the kingdom one established the kingdom forever I wonder where you would be today I wonder where I would be today I wonder where many people will be today if they only did not allow fear to guide them if they only overcame their fear and took the next step. I wonder how many businesses would have been open today. I wonder how many inventions would have been done today. I wonder how many marriages would have been whole today. How many new marriages would have been started today. How many families would have been better. How many careers would have been successful. If only people would not give in to fear. Give in to anxiety. Fear attracts negative results in our life. Job said, what I feared came upon me. Whenever you're afraid of something, whenever you constantly fear the future of the unknown, or you have images of negative outcomes in your life, you have this fear, whatever you fear will come upon you. Because when fear is not kept in check 
it attracts the spirit the spirit called fear and that spirit brings begins to bring negative results into your life job said what i feared came upon me uh came came upon me servant that we just talked that had one talent that he did not multiply he said i was afraid because he was afraid because he saw negative outcome because he saw his master in a negative image he lost his reward and not only he lost his reward he was punished he was punished fear attracts negative results into your life proverbs 29 25 says this the fear of man lays a snare but who trusts in the Lord is safe fear traps you fear stops you from succeeding stops you from moving forward what fears do you have today what fears is God calling you to overcome today what is stopping you from moving forward and achieving what God has in store for you the way we overcome fear is by trusting God opposite word of fear is trust you have to trust somebody greater somebody wiser somebody who knows everything somebody who's above everything and this is God he is the only one that you can trust to overcome fear you you need to commit yourself to the word of God to the promise of God if you have certain issue in your life that you're battling certain fears in your life certain phobias in your life that you're battling you need to arm yourself with the word of God with the promise of God for that specific area read it study it meditate on it memorize it until it becomes living part of you until it changes your subconscious and removes that stronghold of fear in your life there's another fear that I want to talk today about it's a demonic fear and that's something we're going to pray here soon uh, right now after the message whatever God can do through faith Satan can do through fear whatever God can do through faith Satan can do through fear God through our faith Bible says you can move mountains you can do great things for God our faith is is a conduit for God to send things into our life to do great things in our life we see that in, and throughout the scripture Bible uh, Jesus says to this person that person he says great is your faith woman great is your faith uh, to some Syrians he said great is your faith we see that through faith people move mountains through faith people overcame obstacles through faith people stop the sun from moving uh, through faith they call upon uh, assistance from God from heaven where rocks were thrown and they overcame the enemies and uh, through faith we see that Daniel he stopped uh, stopped the mouth of the line we see through faith throughout the Bible and throughout the history and today through faith men of God and women of God do great things but through fear Satan can do opposite in your life because it's negative faith it's trust into negative things make sure that you always keep your heart in check make sure that you don't allow fear to settle in we experience this fear when danger arises but make sure that we process it properly and we do not allow it to stay within us Fear opens the door to demonic, third point. There's a natural fear like logic, uh, common sense like you know don't walk off the high story building because you know you have that natural fear because you're gonna crash and die, fear of death. There's other fears, natural common sense fear that makes sense but there are fears that are demonic and they are they have no logic behind or common sense, common sense and they're unjustifiable. So if you're wondering if that fear that you experience is this just normal, is this just you how many of you wonder that if that fear is just you or it's something something different well if it's not common if it doesn't have logic behind it if it's not unjustifiable that fear is demonic it's supernatural how do you get anytime you don't keep your fear in check he opens the door and invites the spirit of fear to operate in your life when that happens then you begin to experience a torment and supernatural fear there was there was a um, man named Chris and he had a um, he had a good family two kids and a wife um, 
two three years before that Chris they just got saved with their whole family they dedicated their life to God he felt relief he felt good like everything was well and as they continue with life the second child was born so with the second child more stress more more hectic more uh more pressure was added and that pressure was getting to him and when he started feeling that pressure he started he um he started losing appetite he started just kind of not being able to fall asleep because constantly stressing what I'm going to get the money, how I'm going to provide, how I'm going to take care of my family, how I'm going to raise them. And this is all valid concerns and every parent has that. But to what extent do you let that get to you? And so Chris, he got it he got himself so worried he got himself so caught up in the fear of the future and fear of not having enough money and fear of how to provide for the family that he began to uh, experiencing nausea he's beginning to lose his equilibrium even walking I mean he began to feel the physical physically he began to feel that he be, you know he wasn't able to sleep he constant diarrhea he can, can't keep the food in his uh, stomach and so one night again three o'clock at night he can't sleep he leaves the room goes into living room just so he doesn't have to disturb the family and he just turns on the radio maybe so I can so he can hear something some kind of background noise to fall asleep to and as he turns on the radio uh it was static it was bad reception but he hears this preacher preaching he said I couldn't understand what he was doing what he was preaching because the static because the noise but he said the radio came on clear at one point and he said God has not given you a spirit of fear but spirit of sound mind uh, but he, God has not given you a spirit of fear but uh, what's this? What's this? He, God has not given you a spirit of fear but the power love and sound mind he said it struck me he said God has not given a spirit of fear he's like first thing that, uh, that I begin to hear Holy Spirit begin to tell me is that that this is a spirit now he's a new believer he says I understood I did not know anything about demonic realm I didn't know anything about spirituality but he said I felt like Holy Spirit said what you're struggling with is a spirit is not normal anxiety and it's not normal thing he began even to experience thoughts of suicide like it's better for my family to be without me it's, my wife is gonna find a better husband I I'm, I'm worthless even to that extent and he began to understand Holy Spirit told him that this is a spirit of fear so when he began to understand that next thing he he did he, he began to pray within himself and then he said that spirit of fear I command you in Jesus mighty name out of my life the moment he said that he said I felt like the blanket of heaviness of fear of anxiety he's like something that like I even felt physically sinking me into sofa was lifted and I felt like light I felt like a feather and he said those thoughts never came back to me again so we see that there is a spirit of fear that comes it comes through trauma and it comes through unpleasant unpleasant um, uh, situations uh, unpleasant situations that we went through if we if you've gone through trauma maybe you got scared at night or something or maybe you were left alone and uh, something happened or maybe uh, you know you went through some unfortunate situation in your life uh, you got molested you got uh you got abused you got you know jumped you got beaten you got uh you know you experienced some kind of a uh loss in your family lo loss of a friend and fear crept in fear, fear of death or whatever it is it's a spiritual fear and and it has roots in trauma and today we're going to pray against it and we're going to deal with it or if you experienced constant failure, setbacks, limitation in your life and you kept plundering on them and plundering them, you begin to say, I'm nobody, I'm worthless, uh, I can't amount to anything and you, you, you continue to meditate on that, that invites the spirit of fear or invites a bad spirit, evil spirit, demon Bible calls it, to operate in our life and to have a stronghold in our life and today we're going to pray and we're going to break those chains of Satan over our lives. Break the spirit of fear and today you're going to move forward in life. Today you're going to achieve what God has called you to achieve. Today you're going to dream again. Today you're going to reach out for what God has called you to reach. Today you're going to say no to fear. You're going to put an end to fear and you're going to do what God has called you to do. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. Derek Prince shares a story of his wife when she was very very little um, and she crawled into pantry and uh, an accident she got locked up because people didn't see that she was in pantry her mom didn't see that she was in pantry and she locked her up in pantry and she got scared really really she really got scared and from that moment on from from her childhood she experienced phobias 
she was claustrophobic she couldn't be in small spaces so for her all her life she would not ride an elevator elevator doesn't matter how much she had to walk up she would never take elevator she would always walk the stairs first her husband didn't pay attention to it he thought maybe it's just um you know for exercise for health wise and things like that but once he asked her why are you doing this why are you why are you never go into an elevator with me but why you always walk up on the stairs and she said when i was little i got locked up in the pantry on accident i got so scared i got i started having fears of small spaces and i can't be in the elevator whenever i get in there i start hyperventilating and my heart starts racing and i'm afraid and so there right there they pray the prayer of faith they commanded the spirit of fear out and from that moment on she started riding elevators she could be in small spaces and the fear was completely gone whatever it is you're struggling in today there's nothing that's impossible to God God can put an end today to your fear to your struggle to your anxiety to your uh, uh, something that's tormenting your eye sleep paralysis when you experience this overwhelming fear in your sleep and you can't do nothing today God we're gonna pray and today God's gonna put an end to it we're gonna come against the devil we're gonna come against that fear we're gonna come against those strongholds that stopping you from achieving what God has called you to achieve and you're gonna reach the destiny that God has called you to achieve in Jesus mighty name amen church have you received something